Last week, we looked at fossils. So we took a look at what ancient life was, but we did a specific period, and that was the Paleozoic era. Okay, and that was between about 535 to about 250 million years ago. This week, we're going to take a look at fossils from the Cenozoic and Mesozoic era, so about from 245 million years up to present. And so what you're going to see what happened at that point, when, since most of these, again, are marine animals that we're looking at, uh, we're going to see that a lot of things really developed from the Mesozoic that are still around today. So instead of being these odd looking creatures like you saw last time with trilobites and stuff like that, we're going to see things that you actually could find something similar to on a beach today. So this time what we're going to do is the same type of exercise as last time. So we're not going to go through all of the gory detail, but we're going to look at a few different types of species, different groups that are more common to what we see today that are a little bit different than what we saw last time. That's not to say that a lot of the same, at least ancestors of these groups, weren't also around in, during the Paleozoic, but they began to look a lot like what we have today during the Cenozoic and Mesozoic. Okay, so let's take a look at some of the things that we're going to look at today. Uh, first of all, we're going to take a look at a bunch of groups of fossils, and I have just kind of a couple of samples here, and a lot of them are starting to look very similar to what we have today. And what we're going to have then is a few different specific groups. Mostly we're going to look at uh, what are called mollusca. Okay, these are mollusk groups. Now there's a couple of different categories in there that we're going to take a look at that we'll see different varieties of. First one are what are called gastropods, and these are snails. In fact, there was actually a reef made of snails during the Silurian, which is about 400 million years ago. So snails were around a long time, but we started getting a real diversity of snails, and they started really populating during the Cenozoic and Mesozoic. So what we have is a group in here of a bunch of different kinds of animals, of different types of snails, of varying sizes and ages. So the first group that we'll take a look at are snails. We can see that some of these are small, uh, low curves to them. You have to decide whether the curve is to the clockwise direction or the counterclockwise direction. Some of them have high tops on them, like this one. This is a turritella. And uh, some of them are rather large, with low tops but large living areas for the animals. Again, what we're going to do then is take a look at these snails, and we're going to then uh, try to identify them the same way you did last time using the book. Other groups of things that we have are oysters, also part of the, the uh, mollusk groups, and these are very similar looking to the snails. Okay, They have curved backs on them. These oysters went extinct. They think they went extinct because the backs curved so much that they couldn't open their shells well anymore. So you can see sometimes evolving in a certain direction gets you where you can't actually exist anymore. And so some of these little ones, these exogyra little ones, um, as you can see here, they look very similar to snails, went extinct a, a while ago, back in the Senate, in the early Cenozoic, whereas something like this we still see today on the beach. And these are, these are typical of our oysters that we see today. Another group that we can go into in here are that we had a lot of plankton that were really abundant in the ocean during the Mesozoic and Cenozoic. And these are really guide fossils. Remember we talked about guide fossils last time where we said trilobites were the guide fossils in the Cambrian. During the uh, Mesozoic and especially in the Cenozoic, the guide fossils were, were really these foraminifera. And although most of them you can see, you have to look through a microscope to see these are really microscopic organisms. And so most of them you can't really see that well. Some of them did get rather large. Here is one, as you can see, these are called fusilinids. And these are kind of big, they're kind of football shaped, but they have a little bit of size to them. Okay, so fusilinids are a little bit bigger. You get even bigger than that, and the, or these, which again are starting to look like uh, gastropods, they have that big roundish to them, but they're very flat. Okay, and these would float along in the oceans. These are what are called the pneumulites. And in fact, all of the limestones in Egypt, in that area, are made of Pneumulites limestones. And so the Egyptian pyramids are actually made of limestones from this foram. So these were very abundant 
during that period along an ocean basin called the Tethys, which occurred in that part of the world, and we get these huge forearms. Imagine, look at the size difference between. These are orders of magnitude bigger, so these are very odd. So those are another type. Now we also had, uh, especially in the Mesozoic, we had more of these nautiloid type things. These were things that were ancestors, of their cephalopods, their ancestors of our common squid and octopi and things like that. And we had, again, things that were kind of curved around, okay? And these are curved versions of what you saw last time, which were called nautiloids. These are now called aminoids, and they're curved. They have very ornate sutures on them uh, throughout these things. The animal lived up here in the front. Tentacles shot out this way, and it could propel itself like that. So they were very similar to the Nautilus of today, but these were called aminoids. One thing I should show you about these is that this, uh, a couple of things that you've seen in last time, you saw also, are in plastic. Okay, these are bioplastics. And what they have done is make a cast of a real fossil and then uh, poured some plastic in it. So these are not real fossils, they're imprints of them. Okay, and you'll see there are several types in here. All of these are aminoids, these curved versions of the uh, nautiloids. We also had a new thing that came along during the Cretaceous time, which this is a representative of. This is what is called a belemnite. And a belemnite was kind of like our modern squids or cuttlefish. Rather than having an exoskeleton, a skeleton on the outside like these things did, this actually was an internal skeleton that occurred inside the animal. So just like a cuttlefish, you may be seeing cuttlefish bones that they sell for parakeets and things to sharpen their beak on. This was a bone inside the animal. It would have its tentacles out in this region, and it could shoot along through the ocean like that. So this is actually an internal skeleton called a belemnite. Many of these you can find in New Jersey, down around Perth Amboy, Big Brook area, all over the place. These are belemnites. So this is another type of cephalopod. We come over to this area right in here. We get into something that really looks common. Okay, and these are um, mollusca, so they're mollusks. But these are called palesopods, okay? And these are obviously just modern clams, okay? We will see that these are kind of have shells that are open on the inside and, you know, and rounded on the outside, just like our brachiopods were last time. But however, brachiopods, remember, were, were bilaterally symmetrical. So they were the same on both sides. Clearly, with these palesopods, with these clams, they're very different from one side to the other. So these do not have the bilateral symmetry that the brachiopod did. They will be symmetrical this way, so if you have two halves of a shell, the two halves will look the same, but they do not look the same across it. So that's a big difference between brachiopods and palesopods, that you have that break, that one of them is bilaterally symmetrical this way, but not that way, and the other one is not obviously not symmetrical this way, but they are symmetrical that way, between the two halves. Okay, and so that's a big difference. Now, clearly, you can see there are other ones. Again, this is something you might pull off a beach today. They've been around for a while, but they really have not undergone much evolutionary change for millions of years. There's another one that's common today. This is basically a scallop, okay? And these are these are the same thing if you get uh, shell gasoline. Uh, that's the shell that they have on shell gasoline. These are scallops, so you've eaten them before too. These actually do have bilateral symmetry, and they are symmetric across the shells, okay? And so these are obviously much newer than the brachiopods you've seen, uh, but, clear, uh, but clearly they're, they're a little bit different than either one of these groups. last one we might take a look at are these two different types of corals okay these are what are called scleractinian corals they're different type of corals than you had previously that we looked at okay these are modern corals that you might find in the ocean if you go skin diving down around uh, the Keys or in Jamaica or something that's the type of coral reefs you would see these types of things same thing they had the animals all living in the little pore spaces in here these are the same types of animals as you've seen before 
So what you're going to do with these groups are the same thing. You're going to draw pictures, make very detailed observations of the animals themselves. You're going to then identify them using the same book as you did last time, figure out your species. You'll do range charts the same way you did last time by putting the, the groups together and figuring out the ages of the rocks. You'll identify rocks using the same system that you did earlier in the course to be able to kind of put together a rock history. You'll do a same cross section as you did last time. And now we're going to kind of look at a little bit of correlation between different units based on the fossils we see. So that's the only thing different from the last exercise that you did last week is that you're going to have to do a little bit of correlation by looking at different forams, in fact, from different wells. Okay, and that's the only difference. Otherwise, it's the same lab, just with younger fossils from last week.